Alright, we're watching Inert Helium. We're going to be playing Moira. This is on Dumbani. Um, maybe this is console, if I had to guess. Um, and as for the rank, I also need to guess a little bit. I would think it's plat 5. I'm struggling to get wins, and I'm trying so hard in every match, but I feel, so many feel unwinnable. I was making really good progress in Season 8, but I got into plat for the first time. Was stable in plat in Season 8, and you managed to get to that in 5, but now I'm almost dropping out of plat. I'm going to quit if that happens. Uh, here's some replay codes. Please help me. I have no clue what I'm doing wrong. My heals are usually good, and I don't know about positioning. I try and think about it sometimes. I'm not sure where I should be. I bet it's something really obvious, but I really don't know. I'm a support main. I play occasionally play DPS, but these replays are all support, and they're all Moira gameplay. So this is a very, very short game. I'm not even going to watch the second round, because um, OP's team fails to cap first, and I think it's just steamrolled on, on defense. So one thing I want to point out here is that a lot of stuff has changed in Season 9, right? Because, number one, you have the actual literal patch notes, right? You have the, the hitbox changes, you have the healing debuff, you have the fairy rework, all this other stuff. That's number one. Number two, the players have changed, right? Because as a reaction to the patch, whether or not it's correct or not, people are playing differently, right? So, for example, there's often a lot of healing in the game. Uh, people are playing a lot more self-sufficiently. Again, whether or not that's the optimal or not, we'll, we'll find out over the course of the season, but that's sort of what we're seeing. Number three is the compression in ranks, right? So everybody kind of got a soft reset towards the middle, towards like goldish. And so you have, you know, better players playing in lower rank games. Maybe you have worse players playing in higher rank games, whatever it ends up being. It just people got, kind of got squished together and then it'll, it'll sort itself out as everybody just got scrambled, right? It's like if you took, you know, some NBA players, some college players, some high school uh, player, basketball players, and you just threw them all into a group and like, you know, and we're just like, okay, now let's figure out who's in the NBA, who deserves to be in the NBA, who deserves to play in college, who deserves to in high school, and you just randomly create teams. Like, it, you're, it's going to be a bloodbath until we figure out who are actually good enough to play at the highest levels and who belongs to the lower levels. That's sort of what's going to happen here. I say all this because it has absolutely nothing to do with this game. <laughs> um, and I want to say, like, I, I'm trying to remove all the other possible excuses here as to, like, why you are struggling. And I'm going to look at just, like, this particular game and look at your habits. Because the thing is, you might think, oh, how do I control with, like, you know, the new path changes and different players and, like, the ranks, etc. Tune all of it out, right? Ignore all of the noise around whatever the heck is happening outside of you because you can't control what's going on. You can't control the patch. You can't control what the players do. You can't control the rank system. Don't worry about it. All you got to do is worry about your play. Your play is composed of the decisions that you make and when you do them. Right? That's it. Right? What do I want to do? What's the best decision to make here? Try to make the best decision. The reason why you lose this game is because you don't make good decisions. <laughs> you make consistently bad decisions, right? They're not like terrible decisions, but they're not decisions that are helping you win the game. And I think in the in general sense, you should never expect to win a game if you don't make good decisions, right? Like, why would I deserve to win? Like, yeah, occasionally you might get a free win even if you play poorly, but I would never expect that. So in order to expect to win, and I want to expect to win, I need to play well. So we're going to analyze just your offensive section, right? Just four minutes of gameplay, and we're going to talk through what goes wrong in these four minutes. So we're going to start over here. We're going to fade up. Okay, fine. Just chilling. Everyone's good. All right, okay, we know this is a diva. We throw this damage orb. Okay, so that's the first thing. So damage orbs are really, really important. Orbs in general from where are really, really important, right? You don't really have any other abilities, right? You have fade, and then you have your orb. And that's it, right? Coalescence, right? Obviously when you get your ultimate, but you don't even use coalescence on offense, right? Spoiler alert, you don't even use coalescence in four minutes. Um, so we have we have fade, and we have orb. Well, fade uses a defensive ability skill, so the only real ability that we have is fade. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's uh, orb. So what we do with our orbs <coughs> is really, 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 really important extremely important. If you're throwing bad orbs, you're not playing well. Let's look at this orb that you just threw. Let's watch. Let's watch when you threw it, okay? It's, there's going to be artifacts from the game, but okay. So we threw this orb. Let's, let's, let's watch this orb. So orb, damage orbs can do up to 200 damage, okay? So ideally, you want to get as if you're on, a, on a scale of zero damage to 200 damage, you want to get 200 damage, right? So 200 damage orb, great. 150 damage orb, good. 100 damage orb, uh, okay, right? Depends. I mean, if I'm using it to win on Moyan, great, but like otherwise, maybe not so good. 50 damage orb, bad. Zero damage orb, terrible. Well, how much damage this orb... Oh, well, we, we saw it briefly hit the Mercy. Oh, briefly hit the Diva. So, I don't know, maybe it did... 
25 damage? Maybe? Maybe? So, our very first orb that we did was terrible. Like, objectively terrible. Like, there is no other way you could possibly interpret that other than terrible. Well, okay, well, it's just one orb, right? Just, just, just one orb. All right, fine. So, let's kind of keep going here. All right, we're healing, we're healing. It's fine. All right, here we go. Here's orb number two. Let's, let's follow the orb, okay? I'm, I'm literally just going to follow the orb here. All right, remember, we're looking for 200 damage. So, um, our goal is 200. I think that orb did zero damage. So right now, right, if we look at it as accuracy, right, where 100% accuracy is 200 damage, right, 0% accuracy is, is, is zero damage, your combined damage orb accuracy right now is like 5% maybe? <laughs> like, your orb is effectively doing nothing. That's fine, okay? We're here, right? We're not gonna really worry about the rest of the play. Let's literally just focus on your damage orbs. All right, okay, here's your damage orb again. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna be pretty confident this this orb is not gonna hit anybody else on its way out of the out of the atmosphere. So that's the third damage orb that is now zero damage. So your your damage accuracy orb is now is now is your damage accuracy for orbs is now like I don't know one percent. All right, here we go. Do we have another orb coming? Let's find out. All right, we got another we got another. Orb. Okay, at least this this might do a little bit of damage maybe. Well, it just got eaten. So I don't know, maybe it did ten damage, twenty damage before it got popped, like eaten. Pretty terrible so far. All right, so we'll fast forward here. All right, we got another damage orb. Again, at this point, I think we're confident saying it's not gonna hit anybody else. This is another zero da damage orb. This is what, the fifth one so far? All right, healing orb, okay, fine. Okay, so finally, this is actually okay, right? We got, uh, yeah, that, that did probably 100, 125-ish damage, 150 damage maybe. That was fine. This is a fine damage orb, right? I mean, I don't know about the situation, but at least we, we got something from it, right? You got no value from your other damage orb so far. But, okay, let's just forward. Right, heal orb. Okay, we're, we're skipping through because I, I just want to talk about damage orbs and then we'll go back and cover the rest of the gameplay. Right, here's the damage orb. Okay, hit Mercy for a little bit. I don't know, this is probably like 25, 30, 40, 50 damage? Is somebody else shooting here? I'm not, it's actually unclear. Let me make sure. Nope, that that damage orb did maybe 10 damage to her. Yeah, the, the shot is from, from you already. So, we got looking about 10 damage on the damage orb. Uh, not great. And you're gonna die from here. I think we can stop now. I'm talking about orbs. Your damage orbs are ter terrible. <laughs> All right. If you're like, oh, why don't I, why don't I, why do I win games on Moira? A huge starting point is simply looking at why are my damage orbs giving me so little value? Like absurdly low amounts of value with your damage orbs, like comically low values of damage value on your damage orbs, right? Like. If I said, if I compared, I was like, look, let's compare your damage orbs against a bronze five Moira's damage orbs. Who's, who would look better? And I think before I did this video, if I asked you that question, you'd probably say, oh, of course me, right? I'm platinum five or whatever you are right now. How could a, a bronze five player possibly have better damage orbs than me? I would say, how could they possibly not? Because your damage orbs are like virtually zero. Like it, it, your damage orbs are so bad that if we simply removed damage orb from you as a, as a as a as a hero like literally we disabled your ability to throw a damage orb it would not affect your chance of winning this game at all that is nuts to think about right just <laughs> it's important here to just to, to to like take that in right you really need to like internalize that feedback your damage orbs are so bad that if i gave 
your controls to somebody who was brand new to the game and had literally never played or seen Overwatch before, but understood how to push the buttons at least to activate abilities, I guarantee you, on average, they would get more damage from damage orbs than you would in this specific game, compared to this game. I'm not saying in general, right? I'm sure I'll watch all the games, I'm sure you'll find other ones which are better. But in this specific game, they would get more damage on average from literally randomly throwing the damage orbs because your damage orbs almost always get zero value. Okay. I'm going to let that sink in. Now, we're going to go back through and we're going to talk through everything kind of in more detail, right? And we'll talk through what are situations where you do want to throw damage orbs. But as a general rule, your damage orbs are like grossly off target or you're throwing at people where the damage orb is not going to stay with them anyway, and thus it doesn't apply any pressure or damage, right? That's like the, the overarching concept here. I will say that you also look like somebody where you'd benefit tremendously from simply watching a Moira guide. Like, it feels like you're just improv your way through the game, where you're like, oh, I'm just, I just, I feel like this is the, I, I mean, orb's off cooldown, I'm gonna throw the, throw the orb. It doesn't really feel like you have any idea, like, wh how you're actually supposed to be playing the game. This is why I tell people all the time, is watch guides first from people who know what they're talking about on how to play your hero if you want to get better. If you just want, if you want to just improvise, you don't care about getting, some people don't care. Some people, truly, like, I, I, I bet there are millions and millions of Overwatch players who do not care about getting better. Which is fine. It's a game, right? Do whatever you want, right? They're gonna, you know, it's just like some people play basketball and they don't care about getting better. They're like, look, I just go out and I play, you know, play ball with my friends. And I shoot crazy circuit shots and I chuck it up from, you know, from from half court because they think it's fun. Yeah, it's a game. It's fun. Do whatever. But you can't also come back and complain and be like, oh, why am I not getting better when I'm chucking, you know, one-handed throws from from the logo and then they're not going in. And we're like, well, maybe you should start with basic shooting form. We're like, well, that's boring. I don't want to learn shooting form. I'm like, okay, well then you're. I guess you're gonna suck forever then. <laughs> like that's <coughs> that's just kind of the way it's gonna be. So let's roll this back, okay? So I just want to cover the damage orbs because damage orbs are like so egregiously bad that I had to like pick it out first. So the general idea here is, look. We always want to be doing something that's going to help our team, okay? This damage orb does not help our team, so forget it. Like, like what what does help our team right now? Well, at this moment in time, I just want to keep everybody alive. My Yari is low, just heal my Yari, right? In this situation, like, I'm going to be playing main healer because Yari is an uh, off healer. So yeah, just keep him alive, see, what, see, see how this plays out. I can't really make any plays right now, we're just setting up. So, here comes the dive. Echo starts, right? Echo gets a kill, great! This is good, right? This this puts us in a really, really good position to be able to, to win out here. So Echo, I think, killed the Ash up here, right? So Echo's going to kill the Ash up here. So what's going to happen from here is the Mercy's going to be looking for the rest. Your Diva goes up to contest. The correct move right now is to fade up there, right? And get up here and then play with your Diva. Because you're standing right here, you're totally good. No one can kill you behind the Diva. Even the Diva can like starts fighting you here. You can leech, you can throw heal orb, force hurt half the matrix, right? Keep your Diva alive. Most important thing, contest the res here, right? Because your team is gonna follow up with that, right? If you stand here, right? I'm gonna draw this for a second. If you stand here, right, and then the enemy diva stands here, okay. Your junk rat is going to come in through here and she's going to demech the diva. So she can't stay here forever and fight you anyway. So all you have to do is stay here, keep your diva alive, and you're good. And this fight's probably won. That's all you have to do in the situation, right? No skill required. Just go up there and you're good. Instead, what are you doing right now? Always ask yourself, what am I doing to help win this fight? Are you doing anything at this moment in time that is helping to win? Anybody? Look, look, look what you're doing right now, okay? Your diva's in trouble, super low, right? She's trying to deny the res. That's why she's up there. You are trying to heal your diva through the wall. Does this look like winning behavior, right? If you're someone who gets frustrated, like, oh, you know, why am I losing? Why am I losing? Why am I losing? What can I do differently? You could literally heal your teammate, right? Now, granted, your diva's even purple right now, so it's not going to matter anyway. But, like, regard why are you even trying to heal your diva through a wall? This doesn't reflect the play of somebody who is actively trying to get better, okay? I'm not saying that you aren't actually trying to get better. I'm just saying, like, this doesn't demonstrate that, you know? This is, like, it's like literally not doing anything. <laughs> you just do anything that would help your team out here would be helpful, right? Like, jumping up there 100% would have been the best possible play. But even if you're like, oh, man, I think that this is kind of tough because it's, like, a pretty high jump there. I don't really understand how to use the truck to get up there. Fine. At this point in time, I could damage the backline. I could, for example, fade jump up here, throw a damage orb, and try to kill the Ana. That's another possible play that you could do right now, right? I mean, at this point, it's too late, but, like, earlier, like, right... 
at this point in time, you could have got, you could definitely not have thrown that damage orb that flew off to the sky or whatever the heck that happened, right? But over here, just fade jump over here, put pressure on the Ana, right? Ana's throwing grenade in, she doesn't have anything else besides sleep to defend herself. Put damage or pressure here on the Ana, and she dies in two seconds, or two and a half now. Um, she dies in you know two and a half seconds now, unless the Mercy pockets, and then like, it gives your team a chance, right? Just do literally anything, do anything here to help your team. What are you doing right now? Like what? Like does this feel like? Oh man, I'm I'm helping my team win the game. This is not what winning games looks like. This is not what like winning play from a Moira looks like. Forget capping the point. It's gonna take forever to cap the point. Win the fight first, right? That's one of like the most fundamental rules of Overwatch. Forget the objective. Win the fight first, then worry about the objective. Okay. So, again, what are you doing right here? Look, like you throw this damage orb. Right. So to be fair, you did not know the Ana was going to drop there, right? But even then, I think that's a relatively low percentage uh, play situation. I really want to keep my Echo alive here, because my Echo was carrying like incredibly hard. So you could have just faded over here and just kept healing the, the Echo, right? Kept or ready to go after the Ana if the Ana drops, or keep it in case the D.Va tries to go after you. But like this <coughs> is, is not so good. So your Echo's going to die in the back line, right? But still, still winnable, right? Unfortunately, your D.Va's been demacked. Like, you know, we could still we could just still do something here. So I would just leech the the, the diva right now, because she's half health. I went through damage orb because she can eat it, right? Diva has matrix, matrix eats projectiles. We don't want her to eat our abilities, right? That's really, really bad. It's like super easy for her to do, and hers regenerates a lot faster than ours. So, we're chilling, diva's diva's, diva's remacked. So why are we throwing damage orb? I didn't see anything, I can't hear anything. Like this damage orb is, is garbage. Like absolute garbage. <laughs> like A to F scale, F. F. I can I'm like F. Not D minus, not D, not D plus. F. Complete F. There's no reason to throw that damage orb at that moment in time. You see nothing, you have no information whatsoever that indicates this damage orb is gonna be helpful to you. And even if you did throw it this way, which would at least got a little bit of damage, this clips the wall and bounces off that way, which is just like basic aiming. You know? Just you need to put it in the right spot. But I don't think you even knew necessarily that the Diva was gonna be there. Alright. So your Diva's on point. She's capping. Right? We're applying pressure here, right? They have high ground control. Okay, Diva getting low. What's my job? As a main healer, my job is keep my team alive. And in particular, my tank. My tank is getting low. I have things that can be used to try to heal her. So my my options right now is I should go over and I should try to heal her. Because I can't heal her from here. This is way too far away. I can't walk across this because I'm going to die. So just fade, end up over here, and heal her. I'm totally safe back here, right? I'm sure you look at this and you're like, I'm safe. How could I die here? Right? I have cover here, I'm far away from them, my diva's in front of me, I'm good. Just come over and fade. I would also note that your heal juice is like zeroed out right now because of just generally bad heal juice management, but also because your damage orbs aren't landing, right? Without damage orbs, you aren't able to build your gauge back because you're not farming any of the gauge back with damage because your damage orbs are horrendous. So, my diva's getting extremely low. This is your problem right here. Okay? Like, of all possible things that I can say to you is, look, if you keep your D.Va alive here, this has a very strong chance of being a winning fight. That is not what you're doing right now. You are staring at your D.Va as she is getting burned down on the point, doing literally nothing. And now you're like, okay, now I'm going to start pushing into, into these people. But this fight's like over now, right? Because your D.Va has no health, right? And you've already lost your Iari, and they already have all five people back. Like, the Diva's about to get DMAX, so this is about to be a 3 on 5. Your Junkrat has no health. Like, there's no winning scenario here. I don't care if you place... Like, if we swap you with a GM Moira, this fight's over. Like, there's no way to win this fight at this point in time. But you don't know that, because I don't think you're tracking anything else that's going on in the game. So, we're gonna die here, and we're reset. So, as a reminder, what should you do differently? Just literally go to your Diva and keep your Diva alive, and keep your gauge up. So, let's talk about healing mechanics briefly. So, Moira's healing spray does 70 health a second on contact, and then after contact ends, if they're not still being sprayed, they heal for 51 health over 3 seconds. Easy way to think of it is 15 health a second for 3 seconds, okay? So, I only want to heal just enough that my soldier will get healed up. Like, I don't need to constantly keep healing if he's not in pressure, I only need to heal him to with about 50 health less short of max, and the rest will take care of itself. Or like 40 or 30, it's not that big a deal, right? We don't have to be that precise about it. Let's watch how long you heal this soldier for. Okay, you could stop now, right? You could stop at this point in time and you're good, right? And he will heal the rest and you don't need to keep healing. Okay, we're still healing right now. We're still healing. He's full health and you are still healing, right? You saw that You saw that spray? So yeah, in the grand scheme of things, is that small amount not gonna make a difference? It's not, 
But I would just note is that little behaviors, little mistakes in your play add up extremely quickly over the course of a fight and then over the course of multiple fights, which turns into over the course of a match, which adds up over the course of multiple matches. Try to be more efficient about all the things that you do, right? This is a very easier, no pressure situation for you to not burn through a lot of your gauge where you don't have the ability to get it back easily because there are no enemies in view. Just noting this. Okay, you're gonna follow the soldier up here, which is okay, right? I mean, it, it just works better if you have a, a, uh, another like main healer type with your diva, but that's fine, right? You're gonna follow your soldier in. Unfortunately, you've already lost your diva, so there's like there's no win scenario here. There's nothing you can really do. But that damage orb, again, terrible. Like there's not really a, a good option. You could have thrown it towards the diva when she wasn't paying attention, maybe. But like this is this is all lost, right? I think you're gonna realize that this is this this fight's over, and we're gonna reset. Okay, fine. So now you're going to follow your D.Va up. It's fine. You have Coalescence here, right? You have 1 minute and 39 seconds left. You have Coalescence. There's definitely a chance here for you to use Coalescence. All right. Yep. Wait. Good. Right. Good job not healing while purple. Yep. Now we heal. That's fine. Yep. Let's heal. That's fine. All right. We're ready. Echo just died. Unfortunate. Right. I really don't want to push this. I think throwing D.Va damage there, orb there is okay. Right. You don't have a lot else to do right now. But right now, where, where you know your gauge is low and you don't have anybody else to attack, you've got to play real slow right now. I will, yeah, I think, I think <coughs> right now this is going on, there's going to be another situation after this that I think there will be an opportunity. Sometimes, like, you will attack and you won't get an opportunity. That's okay. It happens. That's why you get four minutes to attack, okay? Not every single fight needs to necessarily be winnable. You just need to have enough time to get a fight that's winnable and recognizing what to do. This is another good example of, like, look, be really efficient with your healing, right? You see how you're constantly spraying even though she's basically at full health? This is burning through your gauge. Right? You're only at half right now because of this. That heal orb is obviously like clearly not on target. Right? The soldier is already, you can see him running back to you. He's already sprinting in to get inside of the doorway. Which means that this heal orb will never get to him in time. See? Like you need to have some degree of being able to predict what is going to happen next in a fight. Not even like five seconds, ten seconds, like the next one second, what are people going to do? That awareness is not coming through in any of this play. All right, we're gonna follow the Eva here. So you have Coalescence here, so you have the opportunity to make a play. I would also note right now, Soldier just got a kill. So now it's a five and four situation. Now we push aggressively, extremely aggressively. Even if you get caught out right now in a bad situation, you can pop Coalescence and save yourself against a lot of the things in the game. So I'm thinking be very aggressive right now in Coal with Azmora. So my Diva goes in, what do I do? Fade in and commit. Why? Because my Soldier just got a kill. The whole team, enemy team, is trying to dive my soldier to try to get the kill. I want to be in here and I want to save, right? I would have already been fading in, right? Right there, I would already have been fading and following in my, my diva. So I would be right here, right now, coming out of fade, right? You throw heal orb, try to heal the, kill the soldier, pop coalescence if you need to, but, but if he's going to die, it's going to be like kind of tricky. But either way, I think this is a one fight, right? Soldier just killed two. This is a five on three situation. This fight is over if you just do the basic bare minimum of support play here right and remember you never capped this point so this somehow still gets thrown this fight is over like this is like a 95 percent chance one fight right now if you do basically anything are you doing anything right now okay you go after the ash yeah this is actually an okay play all right ash has popped diva bomb popped well so your uh, Murder gets popped in the air, so I want to make sure to get the save here, right? Pop Coalescence, right? Save, save your Zen. It's easy. Coalescence heals for 140 health a second, right? Bob does about 100 damage a second. Yeah, this is an easy save. Just pop Coalescence and save your Zen. Good. Pop Coalescence. Nope. Are you going to pop Coalescence? You are not. You are saving your Coalescence for Overwatch 3. That is what you're doing right now. <laughs> like, I, the fight is won. W what the heck? <laughs> like, your D.Va is going to get back back. Okay, and then it's just it, like you could use this, save your Zen, kill the Moira, continue saving Zen, right? And then you plus Zen plus Diva right? easily beat the Diva and the, the Ana left. Plus you could have saved your soldier earlier, but like, and the Echo here, right? This would be a four and three situation. And then I fade away. What is my win situation here, right? How do I win if I fade over here? Right? Now your team is on point. They're trying to fight. Your team is trying to win. You are the only person here who is not trying to win. What are you doing back here? Are you going to camp the Pharah? Do you think you can... Do you think you can... Do you want to bet your game on your on the ability to 1v1 a Pharah? 
Because that's effectively what you're doing right now. And let me tell you, you do not win this 1v1. <laughs> right? I, I mean, I'm not even going to go over the mechanics here, but like... It, it, you're not even trying. Like, I think you think you're trying. Right? <coughs> but you see the Ash is like, oh, okay. I'm just going to walk away from you. Right? And and that and that's it. And that's the end of the game. You still, you still, right now, right now, you still have Coalescence. Coalescence, one of the fastest farming ultimates in the game. You popped it zero times in four minutes. This is why you lose games, right? It's not, it's not rocket science. No one's asking you to like to to like win a win a one v two or anything crazy. I'm literally just like, look, my team is going in. Go in with my team. My tank is injured. Can I safely heal them? Heal the tank, right? I can save a teammate with ultimate in a winnable fight. I will use my ultimate and I will save my teammate. This is like Overwatch 101 here, right? There's like no advanced concepts. No one's talking about space control. No one's talking about ult economy. Nobody's talking about like particular rollouts or off angles or any, literally it's just like basic stuff. Like, hey, do your damage orbs ever hit anybody, right? I'm not even looking for like like tricky little flanks or anything like crazy here, or spawn camp. Like literally nothing advanced. <laughs> this is like bronze level stuff. Use abilities to help teammates out because you are a support. Your abilities generally help teammates. Help your teammates. Strangely enough, that wins a lot of games, a lot more games than you would expect, <laughs> because that's the way your kit is designed around is helping your teammates. But you're just not helping, right? Like just. Just the feel of the gameplay over here, right? Your diva goes in right now. It does not feel like you're, you have any sense of urgency right now to try to win this game. Because you can see your soldier through a wall. This is not just replay, right? In game, you can see your soldier is seriously wounded. You can see your soldier has just gotten a pick, right? You can hear that there are multiple people shooting at your soldier right now. You can see that your diva has gone in. You can see that you have coalescence. All of these things add together mean go, go in, fade in, take a risk here. You have to take a risk to try to win the fight, right? And not only that, not only that, right? Is that your soldier somehow in a 3v1 situation kills two of them. Like, what the heck? What even happens here that this could possibly have happened? There, he like, yeah, he lasers down the ash, okay? Your soldier's carrying right now, right? Right, he beats the Pharaoh at close range! He beats the Pharaoh at close range! He gets no help from his team! Think about, think about how you would feel if you were this soldier, right? And the mortar on your team just watched this happen and is still back here staring, like, into the sky. How would you feel if you were your own teammate? Just go help your team. It's not that hard, right? <coughs> Again, not rocket science. Just go help them. Tank goes in, I go in. Tank goes out, I back out, right? Teammate in danger, I try to help them. Yeah, sometimes I'm making mistakes. Sometimes I try to help them when they're not savable. Great, I learn from that. I can understand. I can learn better when teams, teammates are or not savable, right? But sometimes I'm going to help them, and I'm going to save them, and they're going to kill their aggressor, and then we flip the fight and we win it. And that's what a winning play looks like. Because all I see here are losing plays everywhere. Like, I don't think you can point to one thing in four minutes of gameplay that looked like a good play. You know? Like, it's all just like, like very, very slow paced, autopiloting, like, a, you know, a very blase attitude towards the game. We're like, yeah, I'm just gonna chill back here, do nothing, right? I guess, you know, when you fade it over the ash, I think this is okay, right? I think this is fine. But like right here, again, popping coalescence here is a save. So, yes, I think we can wrap there, right? I, I don't think a summary is necessarily because I, I already resummarized it. But like, again, pay attention to your damage orbs, please, right? Look for the opportunities where you can actually throw damage orbs and they will actually hit people and you will actually get more damage. And if you don't think, if, you, if you're about to throw the damage orb and you think, I don't think this is going to hit anybody, just don't throw it, right? It's got a pretty long cooldown. So it's not like, you know, 15 seconds, like eight seconds or whatever it is, right? But it's not zero, so if you're like, I don't think this coalescence is gonna land, just don't, or uh, orb's gonna land, just don't, don't just don't throw the orb. That's it. You know, it's like pretty pretty stuff. Okay, I'm gonna hold there. Hopefully, it's helpful.